discovered. It is moment every time again. with the main event from the Civic Center in Hammond over the special Pioneer and Bay Bomber Roll of the Networks. The second half of today's exciting IRDL clash between the Pioneers and the Bay Bombers. And right now, Pioneers on top by three. Midwest Pioneers 22, Bay Bombers 19. Jerry Seltzer, I'll tell you something. Joan Weston and Marge Laszlo, you and I were just talking about this. These, these teams have been together now for a little while. I'll tell you. The rivalries have been fierce. And it's just it's just incredible to me that there haven't been more injuries in this series, really, the way these teams have gone at each other. And look at that. Right now at the back of the pack, there's Joe Weston in trouble. Dolores Tucker, Marcy Lazo really taking a tour. Down on the track there, I'm right here at her, and I can't see who it is. I believe that's Rita Williams. It is Little Rita being attended to by the trackside position. At any rate, on that last jam, the Bay Bombers cut the margin to one. At 22-21, we are in the fifth period of play in the Civic Center. Jeff, right now, uh, and right now, Jerry, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Pioneers now are enjoying a one-point margin at 22-21. What have you got for us? Well, I was just going to say, this is the last time we can say, uh, really, that to the fans on the Bomber Network that you're going to see the Pioneer game. This is the final one because starting with your next telecast, it's going to be a Bomber home game with Walt Harris. Come, They come live in the San Francisco Bay Area tomorrow at 4.30 here on this station. If you're watching in San Francisco, you're going to see the Bombers at Joggers live and in person. For the visiting Bay Bombers, Carol Peanutsmeyer moves out with the light jersey out of the 30 series, number 27. Bay Bomber Girls, 37 Myers, 36 Ortiz, 34 Tucker, 38 Laszlo. And number 35 is Monica Guest. And the Bay Bombers pick up one point on that play as Darlene Forbes, the Blarney Stone, is passed. Carol Peanutsmeyer, who likes to intimidate you despite the fact that she's only 4 foot 11. Jerry Seltzer, eight times an all-star, not much you can say about that girl. She has earned her place among the all-time greats. She is a fantastic skater, and that shows you something. She's only four foot 11. She's one of the best skaters in this league, and of course, that's why there's great opportunities for people of all sizes at roller derby, and we're gonna tell you a little while later in this program how you can get into the new training center, you fans watching in the Midwest in Chicago. These teams and their series in Chicago tonight, Chet, Last game, their time they're going to meet this season in Chicago at the Amphitheater at 7 p.m. Big match race, Joe Weston and uh, Ronnie Robinson against Charlie O'Connell and Margie Laszlo. We'll tell you a lot about that later. I'm going to talk to them at the end of the telecast, so stay tuned. The scramble from within the pit results in Monica Guest and Rita Williams moving out on this jam trailed by Sherry Eric and Kathy Pulliam. Two pioneers, two Bay Bombers. Williams, Eric representing the Midwest aggregation. Ah, goes Monica Guest. Lovely little Rita makes it happen in the Civic Center. Chet Coppock along with Jerry Seltzer, 6, 7, and 8 coming up, plus interviews. You fans in Chicago, it all happens tonight in the amphitheater. Now Laszlo with Williams, a complete physical mismatch. Little Rita will work on you with speed, with brain power, with guts, with savvy. Going to work on a girl who's been around for 11 campaigns with the blocking helmet on right now. Laszlo with the elbow, comes off on a 360. Look at her measure those strides. She can make it happen. Come on, Golden Drill, give her an assist. Screaming for Joni West to help out teammate Rita Williams, but Joni must worry about the challenge of Monica Guest, which really presents no problem, and we wind up with a scoreless jam. So we're netted up at 22 and 22. Cherry, lots of fans want Roller Derby. It's a fundraiser. It happens everywhere you go. Well, we have with us today from Logan Sport, Indiana, Keith Berkshire, who's bringing Roller Derby to the Berry Bowl there on March 31st. And if you'd like to get Roller Derby booked in your city, uh, if you have an arena or an auditorium or a gym that seats 2,500 people or more, write to Roller Derby Bookings. Post Office Box 1827, Oakland, California, 94604. We'll send you all the information. By the way, if you have an outdoor area, the weather's getting nice, 
it has a uh, conceit for that amount of people. Let us know about that, too. Roller Derby can be played outdoors at a football stadium, a baseball stadium, at a fairgrounds, any place. The Golden Girl, Joni Weston, rated most popular female athlete in the country by most sports writers and sportscasters. I am in agreement with that observation. He's out of the jam right now with the pivot skating helmet on. Kasanovich, 51, Forbes, 58, Kathy Jones, 57, Nybauer, 56, are back in the pack for the Pioneers. Weston will try to rid herself of Armida Ortiz and then play offense. The Golden Girl, they're gonna go to work. Takes her time, measures her up with the elbow. Rinky yelling for a teammate to help her out. She's up on the road. Here we go. Here comes the beef thrust. The blondie stone. The blonde Amazon. Here comes the setup. Bay Bombers checking out like they might be going to the pull away, but nothing yet. Weston out there. Look at the hit bird. And she calls it off, but not before the Midwest Pioneers pick up the lead. Jerry Seltzer. When Joan Weston moves out of the jam, you know things are going to happen. She'll beat you physically, she'll beat you mentally, but one way or the other, she'll beat you. And there, Dolores Tucker trying to beat on Joan Weston. Look out! Over here, we got it going. Darlene Forbes trying to protect her teammate. A lot of team spirit on this Pioneer team. A trademark of the 73 Pioneers. Spirit, hustle, and determination. The fifth period is in the books. That's it, Chet. That is the end of the fifth skating period and the score out there, the Pioneers 23, the Bombers 22. We'll be back in just a moment. Male Wheeler's back in force. The traditional tag off has been completed. Cherry Seltzer tonight in the amphitheater. Chicago fans in for a real treat, if nothing else, by the comeback of the bald eagle, Bob Hine. And you know, this guy means so much to me. He sure does, and here we go. New Bay Bombers moving out to challenge Ronnie Robinson. Roman, 37. Dancel, 34. Ooh, poetry in motion in the Civic Center as they abound across the Pioneer turn. We're in the sixth period. And they're going to play around the fifth. Bingo! Woo! Long time closer. And now they're going to call the crowd. Robinson playing speed. Running the foot race. Setting up with Buffalo Boy. He bypasses. And the men's captain of the Midwest Pioneers. It's it together offensively, and we have ourselves a lead at 25 to 22. Chet, I had a long talk with Nick Scopus at halftime, and he said the Pioneer strategy was to try and keep close with the Bombers in that first half while using basically all of his young players. This half, he said, watch Tony Smith, watch me, watch Ronnie Robinson. And let's watch that fight at the other end. Jerry Seltzer, whatever the case may be, both of these clubs have opened up in the second half. Robinson on call. Tonight, tonight, that's at the amphitheater in Chicago. Get out and see Ronnie Robinson. Joan Weston meet Charlie O'Connell and Margie Lasso, that big match race, the last game in Chicago of this series. No game in Chicago for two weeks. That's at the amphitheater. Plenty of seats remaining, 7 p.m. tonight. Kids under 16 are half price. And the, your first 2,000 people at the game tonight are going to get a free copy of that brand new Roller Derby Illustrated. What a night we got in store for us. Big upcoming Pioneer Bomber games. Wednesday, March 28th, Champaign Central High School. Thursday, March 29th, Pacific Center in Hammond. That, that's next Thursday, the last poster contest with a bike and stereo AM FM radio for prizes from Wards. Remember, kids at half price. March 30th, Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Illinois, Bradley University, Friday. Saturday, March 31st, the Ferry Bowl at Logan, Logansport High School in Logansport, Indiana. That ends the Bomber Pioneer Series. Right now, searching for a means to an end is Johnny Rice in your picture with the full body shot. A kid with a lot of body control. Used to run track, played all sports, as did most of the combatants in roller derby. Followed by Tony Smith. I gotta figure out a nickname for this guy. He's a machine, young and tough. He's durable. 
Scopus, O'Connell, Wiley, Parker, they're all high on Tony Smith. Now John Early tries to maintain his John Price tries to get it back together for the Bay Bombers who now trail after leading most of the way in the first half. Price sends it up. He bypasses Ziggy Robo. He bypasses John Early. He bypasses Bill Hill, and finally he calls off the jam, and there was a breakdown on that play, Jerry Seltzer. There sure was. Uh, what happened there is obvious, that uh, in pulling out Tony Smith, they pulled out some of the central blocking for the Pioneers, and they were left with the newer, smaller skater at the center of that pack. I'm sure the Pioneers are correct that, but right now this game is tied 25-25. The Pioneers Jet will be meeting the Jolders in a brand new series. That starts April 1st Sunday in St. Joseph High School, St. Joseph, Michigan. That's the last game of the year in St. Joseph, J St. Joseph, Michigan. Wednesday, April 4th, Abraham Lincoln High School in Kankakee, Illinois, the same two teams meet. Friday, April 6th at Chicago Amphitheater, the Pioneers and the Jolders, and there'll be a big match race. Saturday, April 7th, Forest View High School in Arlington Heights, Illinois. The tickets available at all Ticketron outlets. And you fans watching in Memphis, next Tuesday, last game of the year at the Mid-South Coliseum. Don't miss this one, 8 p.m. The Pioneers and the Jolders in a big match race, Joan Weston and Jan Bell. That's this Tuesday at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis. Here comes Tony Zale against Rocky Graziano. The classic meeting of middleweight. Vasilio against Ray Robinson. On the track in Hammond, it's Scopus versus Dynamite Tony Roman. Nick the Greek sneaks Scopus up with the Buffalo Boys. Oh, Bombers! One point Pioneers, now one point Bombers. Two point Bombers as Roman gets it back together. An excellent comeback by the San Francisco team, to be sure. Oh, Jerry Seltzer. Talk about turning the tables. Looked like the Bay Bombers were trapped, like the Pioneers were set to reap the harvest. But you don't do that too often when Tony Roman is on the track. Well, of course, the Bombers take the lead now, 29-26. Nick Scopus made his beautiful move. Oh, here's his he coming after Charlie O'Connell. Scopus made a fantastic move. He took himself right out of the play. Tony Roman able to go in, and again, that's why Bob Hine joining the Pioneers tonight is going to make all the difference in the world. Charlie O'Connell. Says he wants to have it made, and probably does. Has a beautiful home out in the Bay Area. You can see all the bridges in San Francisco. Says he used to do some street fighting back in New York. Well, he's done some street fighting here in the Civic Center. Hope you're having fun all along the various networks. This is Roller Derby, the excitement and glamour of the great sport of Roller Derby. IRDL action, not an elite game. No national skating derby to be found. Pioneers, Bay Bombers, longtime rivals. Right now, a Bay Bomber, Alvin Mallory, moves out, trailed by a Pioneer, Big Bill, American Pie Hill. Back in the pack, Bay Bombers out of the 30 series, Pioneers out of the 50 series, both clubs at full and equal strength. Two jammers, two blockers, one pivot skater. Right now, setting up for the Bay Bombers, Robinson with the elbow on Alvin Mallory. On the track star, lowering the move, cutting in with a shot foot. Up and over, he goes, back go! Ah, goes Jimmy Cook, Pioneers on the board. O'Connell really working over Bill Hill. I'll be talking to him after this game, uh, Jeff. There's Bill Hill in trouble down there. What was that sign? You get your free copy of the Roller Derby Rules. Send a postcard to Rules. Roller Derby. Post Office Box 1828. Oakland, California, 94604 on the zip code. Include that zip code and tell us what station you're watching the exciting sport of the Roman Derby. Get yourself a copy of the rules, Jerry Seltzer. All important for these fans. Help them understand the game. And right down in the track right now, Charlie O'Connell and Bill Hill. Having a good verbal session is Bill Morrissey. One third of the stripes moves in to calm everybody's tempers. A two-point margin, 4.27 to play in the sixth period in the Civic Center. A-Bombers 29, Pioneers 27 is once again the matchup evolves. Involving Scopus number 50, Roman 37. Nicky gains the edge as they move across the Pioneer turn. Up front the moving wall, Buffalo Boy. Oh, baby, can he block? He lowers the ball. Robinson, down goes Roman. Turning it up offensively, Pioneers on the board, and Nick Scopus calls it off.
And Charlie O'Connell has been whistled off for a penalty, but not before the Midwest Pioneers tie this game at 29-29. And I, Jerry Seltzer. I have a feeling this one is going to go down the wire. The Pioneers are really spirited. They saved their strength the first half. They're going full tilt. The Bombers, of course, in great shape, as they always are, never slow down. Remember, you can meet this Pioneer team in person next Thursday, all you fans of the Chicago area. Meet the Pioneers at Montgomery Ward State Street Store at High Noon, Joan Weston, Ronnie Robinson, everyone. You get free tickets, free prizes, and by the way, on Wards on State Street Chicago, a great roller derby window. Go by it, see the uh, mannequins with those roller derby uniforms on, that's something to see. Get out and see this in person next Thursday. Even Chet Kopic will be there wearing his famous necktie. And I would like to mention in view of his modesty that the modestly attired Jerry Seltzer will be there for all of you young female followers who are such great fans of his. Look at how Connor with Robinson. Up, a miss. Alio. Ronnie. Removes the balance from the men's captain. There's your action. O'Connell back there. Watch it. Alio, bobbing and waving, setting up like a prize fighter. Now we've slowed down up front. Rice puts down Johnny Early. Tony Roman came to sprinkle some dust on the track and got it right in John Early's eye. Rice and Alvin Mallory. Ronnie Robinson, I believe, has been bypassed. Bay Bombers have regained the lead. Problems for the Midwest team. Tony Smith up front, now Ronnie Robinson. And we are virtually out of jam time. There will be, yes, two San Francisco points. And once again, as the lead continues to seesaw, the Midwest team finds itself on the downhill side at 31-29. You know, Chet, there's only one game in St. Louis in uh, April, and that's Sunday, April 8th, at Keele Auditorium, Pioneers and Jolders with a match race between Bob Hine and Cal Stevens. Chet, a lot of mail this week, a lot of fans defending us when we said, uh, should we take the Pioneers uh, game off the network because the people don't like your way you call the game, and what more can I say? If you have anything... <laughs> You've already said enough. ...you would like to uh, write to Chet about, about the Pioneers, about the games, any questions, except about the training school, right, right there, Chet Copy Care, NES, 300 North State Street, Chicago, Illinois. Here we go again. Second first, same as the first. Scopus and Roman on the balancing act. No, it ain't gonna work, is it? Oh, it goes. No! Tony Roman tried to get just a little bit too cute. Now, lone jamming for his next Scopus. Going to work on Jim Cook, and the passing is complete. One point, Pioneer. 31-30, our score. Now we're even up. Good luck, though. Can't make it happen. Point, 250 against 170. Nothing. The quick snake, the running, fine go! Roman, no! Now on O'Connell, come on, Nicky! No! Woo! They're screaming and standing, look at that crowd! Oh, 4,000 hammered on their face! That is the end of the sixth skating period with the score. The Pioneers 33, the Bombers 31. Don't go away, we're gonna be right back. The wildest of the wild. 24 minutes left in regulation. Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. Boy, I'll tell you, Jerry, at the end of that period, a fight to end all fights. You know, Nick really got hit out there by Charlie O'Connell, and uh, he's gonna need to swell this recover. <laughs> Tony Roman was just knocked down by the Pioneer girls. Oh, don't miss a game in this series. If you've got a, a chance to see these two teams in action, of course, the Wild Jolders come in next for the Pioneers, and of course, also for the Bombers. The Jolders with Cal Stevens, Jerry Cattell, Larry Smith, Francine Koshu, Jan Bello. Oh, what a team. And of course, Jerry Cattell is gonna be with us next week here on the Pioneer Network. He's coming down to scout this team. Gil Orozco is here right now. 
for the Chiefs. They're another opponent of the uh, Pioneers. Rita Williams out for the Pioneers. She is the only scoring possibility at this moment. Although Kathy Pulliam, as I check it now, is starting to move out for the Bay Bombers, but she's got about a lap to go to make up any ground. Laszlo and Weston will fight it out for the right to allow Rita Williams to either have a yes vote or a no vote in this election. Laszlo, come on, Golden Girl, you got plenty of room to set it up. Now she eases back. Does uh, stay within 20 feet of the pack. Little Rita, 4'11", will be helped by her 5'11", inch teammate, the 17-time All-Star. People have been asking me about my All-Star nominations. I'll let you know later on. Williams with Weston, pushes on flow. Whoa. Jerry Seltzer got the most classical of moves by the Pioneers, but nevertheless, our margin up to three points. 34-31 Pioneers, these teams end their series in Chicago tonight. Joan Weston and Ronnie Robinson meeting Charlie O'Connell and Margie Lazlo in that big 10-lap blocking relay race, 2,000 issues of Roller Derby Illustrated giving away free. Get out to the amphitheater tonight. Other big upcoming games. Friday, April 6th, the Jolas meet the Pioneers at the Chicago Amphitheater. Tickets are on sale for that now. You can get them tonight at the Amphitheater or at any ticket drawn outlet. Remember, there are only two games in April at the Amphitheater for the Pioneers. And April 6th is a poster night, and also T-shirts will be given away free to the first 1,000 people. That goes the education. Joan Weston just gave Mars Laszlo an education. Not reading, writing, and arithmetic. Bank track education. Book learning. Book at school. Down goes Tina Meyer. Pioneers with a chance to put on something on that margin. A chance to widen the gap, get some breathing room. I'll tell you, I'd like nothing more than to see our team be able to rest a little bit in the eighth period. The schedule is tough. The games have been piling up. We need a breather. Down goes Candy Jones. Now the Golden Girl, taking her time, waiting for her teammate to regain her composure. Doesn't have to wait long. Candy Jones' forte is resiliency. The setup, the lock in progress. Not illegal. Their hands are not clenched. That they cannot do. There goes Jonah. And Candy Jones calls it off. And the Pioneers pick up two points on that jam. And down here, Laszlo and Weston. Jerry, knowing Joan, knowing Joan Weston the way we do in the amphitheater tonight. Marge Laszlo better be ready. Of course, Marge Laszlo and the rest of the Bombers are going to be ready tomorrow when they open their season in the San Francisco Bay Area. You fans watching the Bay Area, that's when it is tomorrow, live at Kizar Pavilion, 3.45 p.m. Get out there, or you can watch it on this station in San Francisco, 4.30 to 6 p.m. The season returns live to the Bay Area tomorrow. Be sure and see a big game. Monday, April 16th, Chet, at Thornton Township High School in Harvey, Illinois, the Pioneers play the Jolders. Tickets available through all ticket run outlets. Tuesday, April 17th, Elk Grove High School, Elk Grove Elk Village, Illinois. Wednesday, April 18th, at the Fairgrounds Coliseum in Springfield, Illinois. Friday, April 20th, only game of the season, the Jolters and the Pioneer Cincinnati Guards in Cincinnati. Tuesday, May 8th, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, see the Pioneers and the Chiefs. And Sunday, May 13th, at the Louisville Convention Center in Louisville, Kentucky, the Pioneers and the Chiefs. Joan Weston is in the infield for a visit with the doctor, but it doesn't look like anything serious. Darlene Forbes in the penalty box. Margie Laszlo in the penalty box. We'll go four on four. Rita Williams out of the jam for the Pioneers, followed by Monica Guest and Kathy Pulliam, 35 and 31, respectively, for the Bay Bombers. 7-10 to play, seventh period. Girls almost done for the evening, barring the chance of overtime. Rita Williams calls off the jam, and Jerry Seltzer with Darlene Forbes and Joan Weston on the Pines. I buy that thinking in that situation. Stall. Oh, that's right. Stall, stall, until those skaters can get back on the track. Right at the end of this game, we will be talking with Charlie O'Connell, Joan Weston, Margie Laszlo, and Ronnie Robinson. You know, the training school is coming to Chicago, and here is good news. Of course, we have that great one in Alameda, California, but we have the training school with trainer Lou Donovan, former bomber great, trained here all last year. Chicago Amphitheater starting Chicago 15th. If you'd like to get free information, write to Chicago Training School. Post Office Box 1827, Oakland, California. That's Chicago Training School, Post Office Box 1827, Oakland, California. You're going to get all the information back in the mail. Do not write to Chet. Do not call or write the amphitheater. 
We're going to get all the information on it. The grouping and regrouping going on back in the pack, and the result is four jammers out on this play. Jones, 57, Williams, 50 for the Pioneers, and Joan Weston's right shoulder appears to be giving her trouble. Heaven help us if it's a separation. Peanuts Meyer, out along with teammate Armida Ortiz is Joni Weston. You can see that look of unhappiness. She took a couple of real good belts. And we'll check on her condition before this game is over. That much I guarantee you, fans. Up front, Peanuts Meyer puts it together. Armida Ortiz gets it together. They bypass Barney Stone Forbes. They bypass Sherry Eric. And there will be four points on this jam. And just as suddenly as the Pioneers look like they might have something going, minus the services of their superstar of superstars, they are now trailing by one point in this game at 37-36. Chet, great, great paper. We tell you about it every week, and each week it gets better. 26 issues a year. Roller Derby Illustrated. If you would like a free copy, one sample copy per family, please. That is all you will be allowed. Write to Roller Derby Illustrated, General Post Office Box 17, New York, New York, 10001. Get your free copy or a subscription is $6 a year for 26 issues. And you fans in Chicago, tonight at the amphitheater, the first 2,000 people will get a free copy of the brand new issue, all devoted to the Pioneers. Sherry Eric on the cover, a lot of Pioneer stories on the inside. Be sure and get it tonight free at the amphitheater. Subscribe to this great paper. Also columns by Don Drury, television voice of the Eastern Chiefs, Walt Harris, and yours truly. Plenty of good reading, lots of inside tidbits. Keeps you up to date, schedules off, baby. Get a hold of the Roller Derby Illustrated. It's good reading. You know, Keep the pressure, out the pressure Chet is on Darlene Forbes right here. If the Pioneer team falls apart, it's gonna rest on her shoulders with Joe Weston on the bench. And this is what Darlene Here is comes the pull away. Harry Eric. Leading out the charge, right behind her, Candy Jones. Then comes Monica Sunovich. 1971-72 Eastern Season Rookie of the Year. Nybauer, 56. The Barney Stowe, number 58. Here comes the Bay Bomber whip. Here comes Monica Guest, set it up. No! He's out of commission. Here comes Tilly Tucker. Bingo! Nothing! The Pioneers show why I believe their championship material in 73. A situation that had signs of complete and total gloom winds up with nothing but air for the Bay Bombers, which Jerry psychologically has got to be awfully tough for O'Connell's team. And this is great for the Pioneers because uh, you don't ever want to see anybody out hurt. Joan Weston unable to be on the track, and Darlene Forbes did a great job. Here's Joni returning, and uh, good news for the Pioneers. Bob Hine returns tonight in Chicago. Chet, uh, the as we mentioned, this is the last game on the Bomber Network. They open their season tomorrow at Keysar Pavilion in San Francisco for you fans watching there. This Monday at the San Jose Civic Auditorium, Wednesday at the Oakland Auditorium, next Thursday at the Richmond Auditorium, Friday at the Cow Palace, tickets on sale in all areas and also at Ticketron Outlets, May 2nd in Stockton, May 3rd in Sacramento, also Saturday, May 12th, the St. Pete's meet in the Seattle Center Arena, and Sunday, May 13th, at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland. Be sure and see the Bombers as they open their season against the Wild Wild Shoulders. Well, here we got the concession stand treat. Peanuts working on candy. And peanuts is fresh and candy melted. Oh, I won't say a thing to that show. As I win the literary award for bad taste. Luckily, they're skating better than you're talking. Candy Jones is a great addition to this Pioneer team as she hits her former teammate, Carol Peanuts Meyer. Watch Joe Weston. Somebody's feet flying out there, but luckily it wasn't. 
One, one, one in the seventh period. One eleven remaining. Oh, get out there tonight to Chicago. Don't miss this last chance to see these two teams in action. The last game at the amphitheater for two weeks. By the way, a lot of groups come to our games in Chicago and Hammond and everywhere else. You can save money by coming in a group of 25 or more in the Chicago area. This is the number to call, 3291328. Call it on Monday. You got a group of 25 or more Cub Scouts or just the place where you work or anything, come to a Pioneer game, save money. Jeff, the series ends this week, of course. Tonight in Chicago, this Thursday in Hammond. Friday at the Robertson Fieldhouse in Peoria, Saturday at Logansport. Oh, it's it's been a fantastic series. Jerry, I want to see a big crowd out in Bradley because I was once a great student there. Forget that I plucked out. Pioneers 39 and the Bombers 38 will be back with the last period in just a moment. That's our first prize winner of the big wards contest, Chet. Cut them off at the pass this week. One more contest next Thursday here in Hammond. Get your poster and bring it out here. There's the second prize. Go, go, Joni, our golden girl. Want some great prizes from Wards. You can win them here next Thursday, the final one of the season, and of course, last chance to see the Bombers here in Hammond. Alvin Mallory moving into your picture, talking with teammate Jimmy Paul. In a jamming capacity, goes to work on Tony Smith, the youngster, against a guy who's not too old himself, Al Mallory, the ex track star, went to the same high school in Oakland with Frank Robinson. And down he goes, and Mallory picks up eight points. Alvin Mallory ties this game up at 39-39. You know, Jerry uh, Seltzer should have a lot of fun at that amphitheater dinner this Sunday. That, tonight, I understand you couldn't make it last week, uh, Jeff. Uh, really, something came up that was unavoidable. You're going to be out there tonight along with uh, Tony Smith and Rita Williams at 4.30 before the Pioneer game at the Stockyards Inn. Meet all your fans and... Uh, You'll be at the game tonight, so will I. I wouldn't miss this last Chicago game of the series for anything, and I know no fan of the Chicago area will. Any way you look at it, you fans in Chicago, you're in for a treat this evening. These two clubs are at 42nd and Halston Street, just off the Dan Ryan Expressway, easy access. Get out there, take a group, come to the dinner, have some fun. Make it a big evening, make it an evening you'll never forget. Enjoy the sport that millions and millions, countless millions of fans are enjoying every year. Tony Romanow trailed by Scopus and Hessen. 50, 53 for the Pioneers. Coach Nicky, the youngster, Eddie Hessen, really been coming on strong. And look at Tony Roman. Out of your picture, Tony Roman, with an assist from Buffalo Boyd and Jim Cook, just kind of glides on through like a butterfly, if you will, and picks up three points to give his team a three-point margin at 42-39. Next Thursday at Wards on State Street, we got Andy Hollis here tonight, and he's looking forward to that thing, uh, that big turnout of all you Pioneer fans in uh, Chicago next Thursday at the Ward State Street store. Meet the entire Pioneer team in person, get their autographs. Free tickets will be given away to Pioneer Games. We want a huge turnout. Let's show this area how the fans support the Pioneers. Come and meet them in person at Ward's State Street Store next Thursday at noon. The coach has taken himself out. Nick Scopus has gone to the chairs in the infield. On the circle for the Pioneers, Hessen 53. Hill 51, Robinson 58, Smith 56, Early 59. John Early moves out, trailing Johnny Rice at this moment on the jam. Two jammers out, one on each side. We're five and five, full strength for both clubs. 8.53 remaining in the eighth period. Overtime, of course, always a possibility. Referees have let him go pretty good in this game. It's been very, very physical as this series has been throughout. 
Most of the experts thought this would be a skating series. It's gone the other way. Now Robinson sizing up Johnny Rice. Rice doesn't look like he's too happy with this matchup. I don't blame him. He takes an elbow up around the chops. Up front, the Buffalo riding hard on Johnny Early. There you see it. Now Ronnie Robinson moves in and then out of your picture. The low camera shot brings you up today. Now we're back up high. Camera right next to our broadcast perch. The Buffalo. Crouching down low, taking that 250. He sets it up. Now Mallory lowers the boot. No points, Jerry Seltzer and the Pioneers at this point. At best, get the coach back out there on the track because he is their big threat. And I see that Nick Scopus will move back on the circle. Well, it seems to me that Nick went on about five jams in the sixth period. And he got to save himself for the end, but the Pioneers can't save themselves too much here. Again, you fans in Memphis, your last chance to see a game this season. This Tuesday, see these Pioneers in action against the Wild Jolders of Jan Vallo, Francine Koshu, Rosetta Saunders, Larry Smith, Jerry Cattell, Cal Stevens, JoJo Stafford, almost an all-star team in themselves. What formidable opposition they're going to give these Pioneer teams. Big match race, Jan Vallo, Joan Weston. You don't think that's a tough club? 1972 Western season most valuable skaters. Cal Stevens, shoulders. Jan Vallo, shoulders. Wait till they come into the Midwest. They're coming to Chicago. They're coming all the way to the Pioneer Roman the Network. The Pioneers with a 24 karat gold great day opportunity. Here comes the Go Go's. Let's pick it up for you. What can you say besides Charlie, my boy? Okay, Chet, that is the reason that Charlie O'Connell is the most honored man in the game today. They said he was through last season. They're pulling him here, but all he did was do a fantastic job. The fans in the Bay Area, the fans in Portland, in Seattle, in Stockton, in Sacramento, you have the opportunity to see, I, I hate to say it, but Charlie O'Connell is the greatest male skater in the game today. The Pioneers have done a fantastic job in this series, but you just can't say enough about Charlie O'Connell. And really, that last play showed it, because the Pioneers right now are throwing everything they can. They trail by three, five and a half minutes to go. Love him or hate him. Number 40 is the all-time break. I say that totally and unequivocally. Without fear of my biggest attractors happen on Nobody can do what O'Connell can do. And I rank Grohl up there, and I put Ronnie Robinson up there, and that hurts. But Charlie O'Connell is there. Now the Pioneers, trailing by three, setting it up. Robinson going to work on the Buffalo. He slithers by and can't make it happen. Tries again, but Pete Boyd shows it in a chilling. Up high with a heel. Alvin Mallory puts down Bill Hill. Oh, baby, he may have put a dent in the track. Robinson being hampered now by Boyd. Got to worry about Alvin Mallory. One-on-one -on -one situations. Ronnie with the elbow. Alvin takes the abuse. Now on the whip. We're just about out of time, and there goes the whistle. Watch this. Watch it. Mallory gets up with a grin, and Robinson wants a chunk of it. Mallory got up and laughed at Ronnie Robinson, and that's not the answer. I'll tell you something. I've never seen two teams fight harder than they are in this series. Tonight, Bob Hyde returns to the Pioneers at the amphitheater. That's going to be something. You'd like, if you'd like to get advanced information about the next game in your area, put your name on the roller derby mailing list. Write to roller derby mailing list, post office box 1828, Oakland, California, 94604. Oh, big goings on tonight. These teams end their series in Chicago. Big match race. 
2,000 roller derby illustrates given away. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the Bombers open their season in San Francisco. He's our pavilion at 3.45 p.m. live here on the station. Get out there in person, welcome them back. The future is now. The time has come. Don't hold back any longer. 3.17 remaining. Bay Bombers 42, Pioneers 39. I'm Chet Kopic along with Jerry Seltzer. Hope you've been getting your kicks off of this one. We sure have. It's been a thriller. It's been a thriller diller from start to finish. And in the second half, you couldn't ask for a better game. Ed Heston has moved out of the jam for the Pioneers as you watch action back in the pack. Now the wide shot gives you the whole picture. Charlie O'Connell, Jimmy Cook, Buffalo Boyd, our stationed back in defensive capacities. The Bay Bombers at this point have no interest in scoring on this play. They can ride the time out there in pretty good shape. And that's what they've been doing, Chad, about the last three minutes. They have fallen into a defensive pattern. And up front, guys like Dan Sell and Roman are doing a great job of holding off the Pioneers as the action has come down to a virtual standstill. Now O'Connell sets it up for Boyd. Down goes Hessen. We are almost out of time on this jam. And there was a very dumb move by Pete Boyd. It's going to cost him a minute in the penalty box. It's going to cost him a point, too. Oh, is Charlie O'Connell mad at Oh, is he curious? He is not upset about the effort, but he's upset about the fact that they had the Pioneer stop. Instead, they get a point and a penalty, and there is O'Connell. The whole thing is on him now. A minute 58 to go, Chet, and the Pioneers trail the Bombers 42 to 40. Chet, I don't know what Charlie was saying to you, but he sure was pointing up here. Well, you're never going to hear it at a Christian Science lecture. It will never qualify for the Women's Christians Temperance Union either. In a moment, right after the end of this game, remember, I'm going to talk to Charlie O'Connell. We've got a minute Russell. and a half left in regulation. Now, Ronnie Robinson and, of course, Margie Laszlo. Pioneers need two points. Out goes Bill Hill. Bombers, nothing yet. Fans at Hammond Shed, go, go, go. Right behind Hill is Alvin Mallory. Back of Alvin, coach Nick Scopus. Up front, O'Connell. You guessed it. With the blocking helmet on. As time is eclipsed on this jam, Mallory called it off, and wisely so. We probably have time for one more jam if they can regroup and get it together. 40 seconds left on the scoreboard clock, but forget about that if jammers get out before it expires. We'll run the full complement. The Pioneers have got to get the first jammer out. Now, they don't set Scopus out on this. I question next uh, strategy. He's got the strike helmet on, so I'm buying it. Tony Roman, Tony Roman will call it off if he gets out first. Heston moves up for the Pioneers. Ten seconds left on the clock. Oh! Oh, nothing! No! Pioneers with the only threats. O'Connell has moved front on this play, Chet. He's got Jim Cook back blocking. I think the Bombers may have for a pull away. No, now he's changing. The Bombers We're out of puck time. We are out of puck time. Pioneers need a deuce. Oh, how they need two points. Just a second of the kind of action you'll see in the amphitheater just hours from now. O'Connell, left, right. Oh, brother. Come on, Nicky. of an overtime. Sudden death. Girls for five minutes, then men for five minutes. 
Last jam rule does not apply. Out for the Bay Bombers. Pulling him 31, Myers 37. Kisanovich now out for the Pioneers, number 51, along with Candy Jones, 57. Bay Bombers with a quick going at this moment. First point wins. Laszlo is down and the Bay Bombers wisely call off the jam. So with 4.25 remaining in the women's first overtime period, we are still deadlocked at 42 and 42. Jerry Seltzer, what more could you ask for? Of course, there won't be any interviews today. We're not going to have time, but we're going to carry through to this overtime. And you fans in the Bay Area, the Bombers open tomorrow. You fans in Chicago get out there tonight to see these teams end their series. And also in Memphis next Tuesday, be sure and see the Pioneers and the Jolers in that match race. You can hear the go She put down Joan Weston. She's earned the right to be out of this jam when she can do that. Moving around the Pioneer turn, now to the Bay Bombers side. Egged on by her teammates, Mallory and Rice. One on one with Weston. Weston and Laszlo, up twice again. It's served. Come on, Tony. Get ready again, again, with the elbows. Chest high, on the 360. We're more or less halfway through the first overtime. Yeoman defensive work on both sides. Joan Weston with defeat riding on her shoulders held off the challenge of Marge Laszlo. Pioneers still alive. This young and determined club which has won the hearts of Chicagoans, St. Louis fans, Wisconsin folks, Indiana people showing why their championship material in 73. The Bay Bombers just as bold, O'Connell, who says this may be my greatest team. Your fans out in San Francisco will see him shortly. April 14th in Wisconsin Rapids, your fans will tease the Pioneers and Jolers Sunday, April 15th at 6 p.m. State Fairgrounds Coliseum in Indianapolis. Here comes Candy Jones. How I'd love to see this young former bomber come back to hunt her teammates. My goal! Now on goes Peanuts Fire. Candy Jones. Laszlo, down into the defensive stance, but must worry about Weston. Come on, Joni. Now Myers, moves ahead and puts down Candy Jones. Up front, there you see Weston. She takes care of Myers. Peanuts, crushed. Now in Armida Ortiz, down goes the hot tamale. Candy Jones now with a chance. Pioneers win it! Pioneers win it! 